Did the American Revolution begin in Lexington or Concord? Do those guns really work? Aren't you hot in those clothes? They must be so uncomfortable. Weren't they drunk all the time with all that beer? I couldn't possibly live without takeout. How could anyone live without TV, computer, or phone? It must have been so boring. Or was it? Let us visit Abigail Whitney at home and learn more about what colonial life really was. Good day, my friends. I am Abigail Whitney. I am the wife of Samuel and the mother of 17 children. Samuel and I met when we were children on Union Street in Boston. I was born in the year of the Lord, 1735, and Samuel six months older than I. Our friendship grew and we were married in 1757. While living in Boston, I have six children, Samuel, David, Benjamin, Anna, George, and James. My husband, Samuel, is a merchant by trade. He is also very politically active as a Whig. He is a member of the Committees of Safety and Correspondence under the direction of Samuel Adams. He is also a member of the Provincial Congress whose president is John Hancock. Together, Hancock and Adams rally us so that we may make a stance against England for our independence. It is time we govern ourselves. In 1768, the markets in Boston were depressed, so we move on to Concord. Our home is on the Bay Road, the same road the regulars march out from Boston on the 19th of April, 1775. While living in Concord, I have seven children, Abigail, Lydia, Samuel Austin, Joseph, William, John, and Cyrus. This brings me to 13 children the day the regular soldiers marched into Concord looking for supplies and ammunition. Because my husband is still politically active, they have orders to search our house. My husband is muster master for the Concord militia, so he drills the soldiers and takes attendance. He is also the town moderator. My husband is at the North Bridge, so is my son David, when the Concord fight breaks out. And let me reassure you that the revolution begins in both Lexington and Concord. There are no orders for anyone to fire in Lexington, but at the North Bridge, there are direct orders from Major Buttrick, firemen, by God's sakes, fire. So I guess you could say the revolution started both places. So what am I wearing? It is comfortable, let me tell you that for starters. And I dress for the weather, like you do. Well, in the morning, I have my shift on. That is what I have worn to bed. I get dressed up and over it. You may or may not be able to see underneath, but I have a pair of stays. They are made out of linen and bone. It is to prevent osteoporosis, as well as give me a flat front proper 1775 silhouette. I also have a hip roll around the waist to give the uh, illusion of wide hips. Underneath, today I am wearing a cotton petticoat and then over it a, mild, a lightweight wool coat and then a petticoat and then over that I have a medium weight gown made of wool. I am wearing an apron made of linen, country cap, and some pearls, and a little ribbon around my neck. This is how you would see me at home. Now, how do I make my clothes? Well, it is 
quite easy, I tell you. In 1774, the king closed the ports. This is the coercive acts. That's because he was angered at us and over the Boston Tea Party in 73. So flax is a plant that we grow during the summer. It grows about so high, and we harvest it. Inside, you can get a piece like this. It's called toe of the flax. You put it on your spinning wheel, you spin it into thread, weave it into cloth, and from cloth, you can make aprons, such as the one I am wearing, or even a work bag. I have several work bags with me. Now, what about the sheep? I have a cow, I have a horse. I have six oxen, four swine, which you know to be pigs, and four sheep. In the summertime, oh, spring really, it is a good time to shear the sheep. This is dirty wool. It comes from the merino sheep, which is very much around here. So we can clean the wool, a chore the children help me with. We dye the wool, this blue, from the paper that comes from the sugar cone that comes up from the West Indies, part of Samuel's trade routes. So what if we wish to have uh, this red color in my petticoat? Well, that, of course, is blood root, or we can use marigolds to give us yellow or orange. This in a basket I have made, but the village craftsmen are very much a part of my life. There are many baskets that I have that the basket maker in town has. Now, how about cooking at the hearth? Well, I count on the blacksmith. These are ram's horns for pretty designs. All my iron pieces stand up well to the heat. It is a wonderful way to cook, and I am so grateful for the blacksmith as he gives me many of my hearth pieces. Now, this one here, this of course is a redware uh, glaze. It's a pottery piece made by the potterer. I also have bowls, cups, I have creamers and I have an inkwell. The dasher is made by the carpenter. So there is a lot of red clay in New England. This is my mortar and my pestle. This is how I grind my herbs. I like to grind rosemary, sage, and just to give you an idea, if I needed spices, I would be using cinnamon or ginger, but they come from the Orient. This is my porringer. I should say actually it's Ebens because you can see his initials, E-W. It has a decorative handle. We each have a porringer and we each put our initials on it. At home, I have 33 pewter plates. I have plenty of spoons and Samuel has a tankard. This brings me to why you think we drink so much beer. Well, we do drink beer, but we had best not get drunk or our neighbors will not like us. This is the sugar cone. It comes up from the West Indies. These are nippers. When you wish a little piece of sugar, you just nip off what you need and you put it into your recipes. So if you cannot afford sugar, then you must use molasses which is a byproduct of sugar and is used in gingerbread. There is the whitesmith. Here he is, making me a tin candle holder. And I have some soap because in my tin candle holder is a tallow candle. And the soap because the children help me with this chore in the fall. We need to make hundreds and hundreds of candles to survive. This brings me back to telling you more about my children. After living in Concord, I returned back to Boston in 1768, uh, 78, and I have four more children. Sarah, Mary, whom we call Polly, Eben, this one, Henry. He's born in 1783, the year the Treaty of Paris was drafted. 
This is his wife, Lucy. Their real portraits hang in Castine, Maine. We go to Castine after Boston. Let me tell you, while living in Castine, we have done quite well for ourselves and for entertainment, oh, life is more than not so boring. We, in fact, host the town for parties and balls. It's a wonderful time to meet one another, to gather, and to learn your social graces at dances. This is Horn from one of my animals. We like to make things right on our farm using Horn. So you let the goop drip out. And mind you, it does not hurt the animal. When you trim the horns, it's like trimming your nails. So after you let the goop drip out, you can heat that horn, use a wooden mold, and make a spoon or a comb. Or I also have a cup or two at home. Now, here we are with a powder horn. And it keeps the shape of the horn. The strap is made by the tanner. William Dawes, Jr., the rider in addition to Paul Revere, was a tanner by trade. This end, the stopper, made by the carpenter. So now, we have time to tell you a little bit about April the 19th. As my husband was there at the bridge, Paul Revere was captured and later released in Lexington. So out our way in Concord, we had Samuel Prescott tell us, and he went to, uh, my husband did, hastened to dress and went to the middle of town in the middle of night, telling my children and myself to stay at home. The sun rose. Lincoln Minutemen came by my house first. Did you know that Abigail Adams is the sister of Captain William Smith? who is the captain of the Lincoln Minutemen? Well, the Captain Smith lives very close to my home on the Bay Road. Sometimes I am called Mrs. Adams, but I do know of her. I also know of her because my nephew, uh, his name would be John Austin, is at the Boston Massacre trials alongside of Abigail's husband, John, during the trials. He has been a witness of the whole event. Alas, back to Concord, and we are ready to head on. I must tell of you that another day, as I see my time with you, has come to an end. If you wish to meet me, you go to www.abigailbygail.com. Good day.